Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Welcome to another episode of the XY Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. Gwen here, and today I'm with a licensed financial planner from Malaysia who caters to full-time employees to help them keep track of their finances while they juggle between the many facets of their life uh, or of their lives. So please give it up for Woon Bing Fang. Hello, and thank you so much for being here today with me, Woon Bing. Hi, thank you, Gwen. Thank you for having me on board. Yes. So I'm actually very um, excited to speak with you because I mentioned this to you earlier that a few people have uh, referred you to me that you were the perfect guest for this podcast. I can't wait to, um, you know, chat with you and like pick your brain for <laughs> for your journey as a financial advisor. So th- my first question for you would be that like was becoming a financial advisor your chosen career from the start or like how did you go about the financial advice industry? Yeah, I think it's a pretty long process before I came to become a financial planner. Ah. Uh, yeah, it started out if I I actually was in the logistics and supply chain you know, industry. I studied mm-hmm. in diploma and then I studied until masters for supply chain, and I worked in that industry for four years actually. And oh. yeah, and, and then after the four years, what was the shift? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the four years, I work. Uh, I was um hit hunted by a bank. So I work in the bank uh, for another four years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. and that was your transition to financial advice. Yes, correct. So in the bank then, uh, because when the bank, I was exposed to not a lot of uh, financial uh, terminologies and financial work. And it, in there, and I found out that actually I have a strong interest in personal finance. <clears throat> mm, all right. Mm. And- what made you interested in the in the industry? Is it because like you get to help people, or you really like to? Because I um some of the financial advisors I've talked to in this podcast, um, some of their reasons were that they were also wanting to learn about financial advice uh, or financial planning and financial management themselves, and that's why they went into the industry and some um, actually already knew that this is like like they really wanted to help people with personal finance so where do you sit on that yeah okay um oh in over the time uh at least since i started working i've been managing my own finance pretty well mm, and wow. then when i entered into the bank uh, into the you know, financial industry then i saw that hey um there are a lot of people surrounding me they uh they I feel that they still have a lot to improve in the, in terms of their uh, financial knowledge. Mm-hmm. So then I saw these certifications, uh, CFP, and I thought that, hey, why, why not I take it and, you know, just for knowledge? Uh, it's a part of improving my knowledge. And as I went through the course, the one and a half year course, then I find that, hey, I really, really like all these, uh, all these areas and all this uh, knowledge. And I thought that maybe I could make it a career for myself. Wow, and, all right. Yeah, and so as I continue uh, studying, then I more and more convincing myself, hey, I think this is the part where I really mm. like. I think this is a career that I really want to go to, to go into. And besides uh, helping myself, then I could also help a lot of people you know, to, mm-hmm. to achieve what they want in life. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, four years later, you're in this industry, but I'm sure like, or actually, I'm not sure. I want to ask, um, did you encounter any struggles when you were starting out as a financial advisor? Mm, I, I think as a st- starting out, it's um, a lot, lot to learn, actually. 
Oh. Yeah, a lot to, yes. yeah, really a lot to learn. Because um, while I was in the bank, but then uh, over the time, more and more you know, technological advancement, uh, mm-hmm. a lot to keep up. So I probably spent about one, one, one year or less than two years to just to learn about you know, all the products in the, in the market and then all the best practices in financial planning. So that was my earliest struggle. All right. So it's more about educating yourselves and keeping abreast with what's um, going on, because it is true that in the financial advice and industry, there are a lot of changes, a lot of amendments um, with regards to um, financial advice and, you know, the innovations that that happens in the industry. And but it's a good thing that you were able to overcome that, because um, I know that there are a lot of people who like after seeing how challenging it is to be industry, they actually change career. So what made you stay? I see. Um, it's also on the job, uh, not on the job practice. Uh, and as I you know, keep my keep myself ready for those uh, prospects or clients that I meet, um, when they are able to get the answer that they want, yeah, I could actually see that there are satisfaction from there. So mm-hmm. uh, that what kept uh, kept me going. It also means that what I'm doing is right until now <laughs> yes. to be fully equipped, not uh, fully equipped to the way that uh, I could resolve most of their queries, if not all. Yeah, right. That, yeah. That's so true. And um, I read up on you, and uh, as I mentioned in your, in the introduction, that um, you primarily, or just correct me if I'm wrong, but you primarily um, cater to full time employees. Did you, uh, or like, did you strategically uh, develop this niche of clients, or did that just happen organically for you? Mm, yes, I feel that I could um, help full time employees more because I was in the uh, as an employee for eight years, so mm, I would understand yeah. the struggles that uh, most pe- most of the full time employees would be going through, and most of the time, uh, when we climb up the corporate ladder time is really limited and when yes. time is limited then uh we some somehow we our, our personal finance start to fall off because uh work always comes first and then uh if ha- we have our own family uh our own family will come in second or even the first as well so personal mm-hmm. finance will come in the third uh yeah. and so sometimes when people come to that stage uh they start to lose track of their money and then you know, they would not be able to get what they want later in life. Yes, I definitely yeah. agree because, you know, there we only have like, what, 24 hours in a day. And then like almost half of that would be for resting or sleeping, if <laughs> any at all. And then you also have like your family um, spending time with your uh, with kids if they if mm-hmm. they have any. And then there's like your career. And sometimes you actually have to like put in extra hours either to um, work at the office or learn something new so that you can advance your career. And then there's you know, socializing, even that is something yeah. that you have to put time into. And I definitely agree that, you know, we really need help with some of the aspects in our lives, especially with finances, because it does tend to be um, put in the back burner uh, because it's just something that, well, let's face it, like I know for a fact that I dread <laughs> <laughs> looking at my finances sometimes yeah. and you just put it off and you put it off and you just need someone to keep you in track so mm-hmm. so you've you've really gone through this niche and it's also because um you know how like full-time employees feel and that's very nice because i know that's um some I I guess the the thing with a niche client is born about with personal experiences because um, some advisors um, their niche there are millennials um, mm-hmm. who are just starting out who are fresh graduates and the reason they've targeted those type of people is because um, they've they know how it feels and then there are some as well who target like 
um, small families or uh, mm-hmm. couples who are starting out uh, and starting to build their families because they too are um, uh, in their personal life they're they're also trying to grow their own family so that's very interesting that there is like a correlation between our personal lives and our um, ideal client base as well now mm-hmm. how does like how do you approach or first, like, how do you actually um, speak to those people? Like, how do you make sure that you get your idea client base? Do you speak to them, um, like, chat individually? Is that, like, cold market mm-hmm. calling? Or, like, how do you go about looking for your ideal client? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, it started up with uh, all my <clears throat> my my network because I I used to work for eight years I know a lot of people and mm-hmm. at the beginning time I uh, I just informed them I've uh, changed my career to become financial planner and I like to let them know what service I provide so uh, there was a lot of lunch <laughs> a lot of lunch appointment uh, for, ah. for for the first first two years so just letting mm-hmm. them know that I'm in this, in this uh in this career and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. what is my sub value pos- proposition. And um, well, most of them, get, them also engage me in a in a way, uh, in a in a full planning way, or in cert, in certain uh, financial products, uh, mm. uh, way, yeah. And after that, it was uh, pretty automatic. Um, where I got referred, being referred mm. more and more, yeah. Mm, so yes. um, cause they started to see value in terms of the planning that I provide, mm. and then it makes a little dent in, a little impact in their life. So yes. that's when the referral will come in. Ah, nice. Uh, so you had yeah. to <laughs> you had to go through a lot of lunches for the first yes. two years. And you All planted right. that seed. And um, I can definitely agree. So here in the Philippines, there are actually, if you get into coffee shops, there are also a lot of financial advisors who have appointments with a yeah. prospective client. So I can <laughs> definitely agree to uh, or, and relate to that. But it it seems like um, those first two years have really been um, fruitful for you because now you run through mostly referrals. Yeah. Now, so how do you make sure that your current client has a better chance of um, giving you a referral? Like, what do you do in your process? Because every now and then, People have a, a slight changes in uh their 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 routine, and when mm. it comes change of in terms of life stage, then they would start to think, hey, I need to do something, but then I'm not too sure. So they would actually ref- they would actually uh, discuss with me, and that's where the engagement is. So the engagement is ongoing, and mm. then I would actually don't lose track with them, and they and then as they plan out uh their little their their life with me, they also say, hey. I also got another friend who is in such such situation. Uh, why not? Uh, I will ask my friend to actually contact you uh, to to discuss a bit. I say, yeah, yeah, why not? So that's where uh engagements uh keep going on, mm-hmm. and that's how my process is. All right, that's wonderful. And now, like, do you is your business run running fully on referrals, or do you still reach out to other people, um, or like, do you do some kind of marketing? Yeah, actually, uh, for the third year and the fourth year onwards, the the, the struggle that I'm having now is actually to let more people understand what uh, we actually do as financial planners. Mm. Because um, as times goes by, I uh, sometimes get disappointed because mm. I saw a lot of scams, lies, oh, and, yes, and yes. yeah, and hard, yeah, their hard earned money being you know, being siphoned out, siphoned mm. away. So, mm. uh. Uh, I think all these are, are, are primarily driven by greed, by human greed. Okay? <laughs> yes. yeah. But also importantly is about knowledge, about mm. you know, regulations or what what is the regulated um, uh, platforms and, mm. and so on and so forth. And also about learning who can the people trust you know, in mm. terms of financial matters. Mm. Yeah. So um yes, I'm doing marketing. Uh, I'm mm. I'm scaling up my marketing to let people know that hey, we financial planners are here for you, and mm. then um we are you know, we are we are someone that 
you can rely on on financial matters. Yeah, that's very interesting that you brought that up, one big uh, one being because. Um, I think a friend and I were just talking yesterday about that same situation as well. Um, and that's still happening here in the Philippines too, that nowadays, especially with with the pandemic, there are a lot of videos popping up everywhere in YouTube and TikTok and, um, you know, giving financial advice, financial tips, or even like investment tips, like <laughs> investment uh, tips and whatnot. And yeah some people because like they sound so or they look so trustworthy like they they follow their advice especially in the investment sides on like what to invest like this is a sure thing in investments and we as like especially the uh, financial planners and financial advisors know that there is always risk that comes in like investing and Mm -hmm. um and this isn't communicated well or even at all in some of these videos that we see um, circulating in the interweb. So I'm really glad that you've brought that up and that you're trying your best to target your marketing strategies in educating um, other people on how financial planners are the best person to trust with regards to doing all these things because um, it's very, it's sort of alarming to hear some people convince other people that, like, mm-hmm. and in, there's this certain kind of investments that provides this RO, this percentage of an ROI with minimal risk, and we know that's not true. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> even with like some people invest first without having any savings or having any insurance. Mm. And so, yes, and that's very alarming. Have you encountered any um, like clients that you have before? And like, were you able to correct that certain type of mindset? Mm. Uh, they, they are actually. And there are also mm. who have already uh, been scammed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they were scams. Oh. So I asked them uh, how do they feel about it? And they said, um, well, they, they at first they say no risk, no gain. <laughs> <laughs> but then of course they express remorse that uh, uh it, it, it should not happen that way. So uh, yeah, then we just continue our conversation to you know, to I just thought that it's okay to be slow in terms of getting money, but uh, mm-hmm. so long that the money is the money you get is sustainable and mm. would not run away you know, just in, yes. uh, yeah, in a second or so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I'm glad, I'm happy that you started that sort of um, answer with asking your client how they feel about it because yeah. I think it's important that we know what they're actually thinking about um, those type of things. And so I'm just wondering now, like, and because it's, like I mentioned, like the whole world turned upside down when the pandemic started. So I'm wondering, did you encounter any or experience any struggles when you were still adapting to the new normal? Or did you find that the new normal was even better than like how we do things before? Yeah. Um, So like the pandemic started, um, I think in, in Malaysia it started, in March, where uh, yeah, we have yeah. a movement control order, uh, where we, we mm. cannot go out of house. So th- mm. that's the part where every life, where everyone's life changes, including my my own family. So uh, I my elder sister who lost lost her job, uh, mm. recently, and now she she's finding another one. So mm. uh, for myself, uh, my business um is the opposite. When my, my business grew three times last year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Two, three times. So, uh, it, it's very unexpected. I, I did not did not foresee that at, uh, at all, and most of it are uh, done done through Zoom and uh, social mm-hmm. media. Yeah. So last uh, last year actually exposed me to ma- mainly just uh <clears throat> on online platforms rather than ah, yes. <laughs> uh, rather than large physical platform. Uh, <laughs> <rather> physical <thing. laughs> yeah. So, so last so- year. So before yeah. the pandemic, you um your n- normal routine was to meet clients over lunch, and yeah. then um after the pandemic hit us, um it was all Zoom. So so you were able to grow your business three times. Then um before that, and so 
so it should be a good thing, right? So right. were you able to just transition to it like smoothly or did you have um, any struggles like trying to um, figure out how technology works like some people especially me I'm not even good at zoom and I had to like, really ace it during the pandemic like setting up our you know meeting rooms and stuff so how did that go for you yeah I think uh, for the for first few months it's a bit uncomfortable because I was just looking yeah. at the screen <laughs> <laughs> okay, screen and and sometimes though, uh, my my clients don't even want to uh, on their video, so I'll be oh, talking yes. blank into the screen, talking to myself. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, it takes uh, it takes a couple of months to 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 get used to it, but after that, it oh, is fine. And uh, uh, I think come the Zoom, then Microsoft, you no, know, all all these things starts to develop mm. their own platform, and uh, ah, yes. uh, over the months, then just uh, just to explore their platforms, which one is uh, more comfortable or or smoother, and turns out I think it's almost the same <laughs> yes yes and um some of like my friends are even saying that they are able to save money because they don't have to like pay for lunch or save time because they don't have to commute and so that they really like um what the pandemic has brought us with like giving us uh the you know, giving us time to develop our technology skills and handling like online meetings and all that stuff. But how are you able to keep your clients' attention? Because they're just at home, right? And they're talking yeah. to you and in uh, in Zoom. And sometimes they don't even turn on their cameras. So how are you able to like keep their attention while you you guys are talking with within your meeting? Because I know sometimes it can be difficult, like if they're children are calling them or like there's a dog in the background i think it's about timing uh first, first one is about timing because mm. uh throughout throughout uh, all the session that i made uh i think one and a half hours that's uh, the optimum right that's the optimum mm. where our attention mm. will be maximized including myself yeah. anything more than one and a half hours mm, we start to get distracted uh, our minds have to <laughs> go hey why you know yeah. all this stuff uh, yeah so uh timing is one and second thing mm. is uh the, the purpose of the yeah the purpose so what's the purpose of mm. the uh of the discussion so we just mm. get straight into the point we discuss it and then um, probably less than one and a half hour we just uh, we could end it with uh, nicely yeah Mm, all right so you rely more on uh, making sure that it goes within your time limit as well as like the the meeting or the conversation really has a purpose um so that you can also set that expectation to your client right so mm -hmm. i would agree definitely um i think if you just you know ring up your client out of the blue, <laughs> they'd yeah. more likely be inclined to to not stay. But because that you've set an intention for your particular meeting on that specific time, then yeah. yes, they more likely listen to you and um, you know have a really good professional conversation with you. Right, right. So, yeah. and because you're now um, doing your marketing and your uh, you know, you have this um, set up for your online business now and it's thriving. How are you like, what are your goals for the rest of the year in terms of like, are you growing your business or um, are you banking on marketing? Yeah. So for for this year and uh, for the following year, I, I will put in more resources into marketing and then uh, mm -hmm. letting people know about the financial services that myself or no, or all the other financial planners have. So it's about uh, also about continuing the education of the, to mm -hmm. the community you know, or to the society that uh, we are here. <laughs> we exist. Mm -hmm. And yes. just yesterday, yes. yeah, just yesterday, I just uh, spoke with a uh, new new prospect is a mm -hmm. uh, husband and wife, and mm. the conversation actually lasted three hours, more than three oh. hours. <laughs> it's over <laughs> my limit, but then they have <laughs> <laughs> it's really over my limit. So the the uh, originally they wanted uh, to to see me for certain financial products, but as mm. I explained my services to them, they got very mm. uh, curious. 
to mm. what uh, to to what service that I'm I'm having, mm. and then so um I explain to them how it goes, and they also talk to me how their lives are, <clears throat> and <clears throat> you know uh the husband just said multiple times that this is the first time I know that there's such service ah. exists at all. Mm. Mm. Ah, you mentioned many times, so I think uh a lot of people deserve to know that uh there's such service here. And then mm. they it is an option for them to look mm. for us if mm-hmm. they <clears throat> whenever they need. Oh yes, that's right. That's true because I know that like some people would think that they know everything there is to know um, about you know financial management. That's actually including me. That's what was what was my mindset like a few years ago um, before I met my husband, who's also a financial advisor. So, um, and I thought that I knew all that there was to know until you know, my my husband spoke about it with me and he told me about all of these things. Um, and I realized, hey, so I've been managing my finance all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> at this time, right? And I know that there are a lot of people that are out there who still think that way as well, that they know everything that there is to know. They're fine. They don't need a financial planner. Um, but I'm glad that you are um, focusing your marketing on that because um, I forgot who said it, but it, it says that if the student is ready, then the teacher will appear. <laughs> so it would yeah. seem that... Um, as long as you put on your um, your your services out there, um, and then someone is going to read it and read it all over um, for a period of time, and then they realize, hey, that's something that I didn't know. Why not contact this financial advisor and see what he can tell me? And then you'll have the three-hour conversation, <laughs> and they'll be saying like, oh, I didn't know that. I never knew that before. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm really glad that that's actually, I think that's a, a very good way to do um, marketing as well as to focus on what you're, what you can offer as a financial advisor. If not you, then the financial ad- planners in general can offer you because it provides um, more information about the profession uh the professionals behind the the industry and will definitely help out the industry but aside from that like aside from you know marketing do you plan on expanding your um your client base uh, outside full-time employees or do you really want to niche in on on that particular um client profile Mm-hmm. Until, until now, I could say ninety um, percent of my clientele are uh, full time employees, and ten mm. percent are probably uh, retirees, and uh, mm. even very young. Some some are just students because uh, they mm. they they have worked part time. You know, they they want to, uh, to 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 save a bit money and uh, help them along mm. the way. So uh, I think I could back best serve this uh, this group of people, and mm. then of course if any one outside of this group of people. Uh, they want to contact me yeah we mm. can discuss it and see uh, how mm. i could you know, help them yeah that's right and yeah. i'm really it's very uh, i i find it very refreshing that you mentioned that there are already students contacting <laughs> you for for yes. financial advice i yeah. think if i had that um, if i had that <laughs> mindset when i was still a student it would be very different so um and i wonder like how do you do, do you change your um, the way you or your financial management structure because they're students and do you change it for retirees as well? Yeah, of course, um, both like students. Uh, I think recently, just two months ago, uh, I, I got referred to, to this uh, student age mm. 17 before birthday. Uh, today, oh. uh, this year should be 18. Yeah, <clears throat> so mm. she wanted to learn. So I, you know, I, I customized the uh, the the financial planning, you no know, le- lessons a bit, and then I guide her very basic level, and at least for her mm-hmm. a platform to begin with, a, a stepping stone to begin with, mm-hmm. and then as she progress through her studies, and when she gets her first job, then she knows what to do. 
Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Like for, That's for a retirees, good one. Yeah, mm. for retirees, it's more to uh, having your cash flow to be sustainable and then mm. to look out for unnecessary spending <laughs> due to uh, for fun or for, yes. uh, for, uh, for anything else that is not within the plan. So yes. uh, for for retirees, yeah, yeah, they could have fun, but just uh have a have a number in mind <laughs> to mm, for you. That's true. You take out the money. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Because you like you never know what's in store for you in the future, and having to, um, ideally we won't have our clients work anymore, especially on like if they don't want to work anymore, right? <laughs> so I'm really glad that you have that journey and that you have that plan in mind. And I'm also happy to learn that, you know, your business is tr- thriving because I know that there are some um, financial advisors who are struggling, um. Mm to you know transition their business from the traditional way of doing things over to like what's the new normal now which is like zoom meetings and um you know setting up like online appointments and even like setting up their home offices right but and and so i'm happy to learn that your 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 business has grown three times more and hopefully you have like i can see more marketing strategies from you in the future i'm l- looking forward to seeing all of your content in the um, in our social media like where do you post your 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 marketing is it more on linkedin or yeah, like, I, 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 I started with uh, Instagram and I mean it's oh. Instagram right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. but just um I'm looking out to our website also. I, I just uh probably website to you not know, to uh leverage on website to uh, expand my reach and mm. you know, I, any other probably LinkedIn later. Uh, so uh, I have to do yes. it one by one. <laughs> I can't do it everything yes. together. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, I I don't think it's very advisable to do it all at once, especially if you're still trying to learn like a platform. It's really good to hone in on that one as well. So that is actually another good strategy to do. Well, I'm very happy to hear from you about that, and I'm sure that I will post the link to your web site in the description of this podcast but um, it's like it's almost the end of our podcast so I'm just going to ask you one last question like would there be do you have any advice for um, any upcoming financial advisors that are are out there um, like anything that you want them to know when they're still starting out Mm, I think uh, most of all uh, for anyone who is interested to you know to to get into this uh to, to this career, uh, I think one of it is passion and purpose. Mm, and yes. I think if you have these two uh close to your heart, whatever you do, however you do it, uh, you mm. will succeed in doing mm. uh doing what you want to do. And the people that you approach, the people that you network with, the people that you link with. No, um, everyone could actually benefit from your service, from mm-hmm. your service. So, um, I think it's very important to have this tool as a base first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well said. Well said, Wenbing. And lastly, like, how can people reach you if they want to know more about you and what you do? Uh, okay, they could reach uh via my LinkedIn or uh mm. Facebook. Yeah. And also for, of course, for for local Malaysians, they could actually reach me by my mobile number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. I'll be sure to link those up all in the description box um, for this podcast. So thank you so much for your time, Moon Bing. I'm really happy that you opened up to us in this podcast and shared your journey in, uh, in, in your chosen career of financial advice. And thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Have a good one. All right. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you.